last episode we took over at Crystal Palace, sold our best two players, but somehow still found ourselves top of the league after the first two games. But with a huge budget still left over, with some big decisions need to be made about how we're going to improve the rest of this squad. But first, it's time to face the media. Good afternoon, Adrian. I request that you give me the chance to prove I'm the man for the head scout role, being the first regular reporter for you since our Everton days. My scouting report is as follows. Sebastian Simanski, he's the perfect replacement for Elise, says he can grow to an 85. His shooting and dribbling are great, and he would love to switch from Turkey to England. Get some Fernandez, he's another player desperate for a move to England. His versatility to play Cam, central midfield and central defensive midfield fits perfectly into our 5 2 3 setup. Javi Guerrero, more of a signing for the future. He can play second fiddle to Wharton and Decore and even replace them should a big cub come knocking. And finally, Gabri Vega, a surprise addition. However, the displeasure of the footballing world and his move to El Etifak has finally got to him, fueled by her Henderson's sudden departure as well. His potential of 87 would be a major factor in our challenge for European glory and his dribbling and passing already well renowned. I shall come with a report for a suitable strike at the earliest. However, before that, kindly confirm if you wish to retain my services under the following terms. Roll, head scout, weekly wage, €15,000, length, five career modes, release clause, none, and signing bonus. Recognition of this comment in the interview of the next episode. Well, you've certainly got your signing bonus, so thank you very much for that. And as ever, I really do appreciate all your comments, your feedback. It really does help make this channel what it is and make these videos that one step better every single time. Now, let's start off with the 24-year-old Polish man, Sebastian Simansi. Absolutely no doubt that at 80 rated, he would come in and improve my starting 11 and he is in the position that I am so desperately craving since the departures of Elise and Eze. Getsa Fernandes is an interesting one, someone whom I hadn't considered after a pretty unsuccessful term at Tottenham only a few years ago. It looks like he's gone away to Turkey and has really made a name for himself and you are totally right. He does offer a great deal of flexibility in that midfield. To be honest though, I'm kind of okay with Decore with him being 79 rated and I really don't want to bring anyone in who's going to disrupt the potential of this man Adam Wharton. However, with me only having the likes of Jefferson Lerma at 28 years of age and the 74 rated Will Hughes also at 28 years of age. Neither of those two are likely to improve in the future. So whilst I'm not sure central midfield is a priority position for me at the moment, perhaps come the start of the second season when I want to improve my team even more, he may be a man that I want to go back in for. And the same can be said for this man, Javi Guerrero at 20 years of age. It looks like he's got decent potential. Obviously, I don't quite know what the scout report has got to say for itself, but once again, keep an eye on him. Could be someone of interest to me in the second season. And of course, it's third time a charm with this man Gabri Vega another very interesting shout versatility both in the central midfield and central attacking midfield at just 21 years of age he certainly has the best years ahead of him I'm sure he will be desperate for a move to the Premier League keep your eye on this young man however whilst the game will only allow me to hire six scouts I am pretty sure I can find room for at least one more so once again thank you very much for your feedback I really do appreciate it and make sure you keep it coming Crystal Palace may need a striker for this year and my suggestions are Dominic Solanke a man who's had a great season and knows how to score goals. Dominic Calvert-Lewin is a great striker. He knows the Premier League. He knows how to score goals and Everton are accepting an offer for him this season so he is also an option. Joe Gelhard and Rutter from Leeds. You can get them both on a cheap price and they also have a huge potential. And Alex Grant in my personal favourite. He's a Lewandowski type player. I am not joking. Maybe not that prolific but he's in cheap Lewandowski for sure. Now a striker is an interesting one because I declared in the very start of episode one that I was actually pretty happy with the two options that I've got. Of course this man Jean-Philippe Mateta was the man who did score that oh so pivotal goal against Arsenal to get his first goal in his first game in the Premier League this season having suffered an injury but I haven't really been that impressed with the 25 year old Frenchman Odewald I've got to be honest he's obviously lost his place in the starting 11 and with Brighton coming in with an offer of 7.5 million pound for the Frenchman it's an offer that I'm very happy to accept and it does mean that he will be leaving the club and surely will be the final big name departure out of Crystal Palace for this summer transfer window and with it topping me up to now a whopping £93 million left to spend and leaving Jean-Philippe Mateta as the only recognised senior striker at the club. I think it's time to get down to some trots for work. So looking at some of your suggestions, Serhu Girassi could be a really interesting option, but with me unable to get a full scout report on him before the summer transfer window will shut, I've got no idea how much to offer for the player. I think Dominic Calvert-Lewin would be a realistic option, but it looks like Wolfsburg have beaten me to the punch and they secured his services as he's decided to move away from English football. And so that has left me with a move for the person whom I think is the pick of the bunch. He's a young man who's an Englishman and fits into the homegrown quota here in the Premier League. He racked up 19 goals in 38 appearances for Bournemouth last season. And he's a young man who knows if he wants to make a name for himself in the English national team, it is time for him to move to the now English feeder club of Crystal Palace. That is right. It is time to say hello to Dominic Solanke, the former Liverpool and Bournemouth fan who joins Crystal Palace for a fee of 
worth just £17.4 million. I'm absolutely delighted to get him on what I think is a real bargain. He's someone who has that something special at just 25 years of age. He's entering his prime and with him being 78 rated, he's already a higher overall rating than Jean-Philippe Mateta. I think he's got all the attributes to be a really special player here at Crystal Palace. But with £73 million still left remaining in the budget and with the departures of Michael Elise to Arsenal and Eze to Liverpool, the burning question on everyone's lips is who is going to join this man Fabio Vieira as my other central attacking midfield signing. However, with Raksaki getting on the score sheet in episode one with an absolute stunner of a volley and youngster Matthias Franca also getting an assist on his first game in a Crystal Palace shirt this season, it raised the question, do I want to spend big money to find a partner in midfield for this man Fabio Vieira or do I want to consider giving my some of my younger talent the opportunity to stake their claim for a starting spot in my starting 11? And so that is why I put the vote to you on a poll on my channel and I've got to be honest, I am absolutely shocked by the results. I really thought that the majority of you would want me to splash the cash, but no, you have decided that the absolute stunner that Raksaki put into the back of the net on episode one was enough for him to get the opportunity to make his name as our starting central attacking midfield player. Now, obviously, EAFC have recognised that he's got that something special and seemingly you have as well. With him being 70 rated and just 20 years of age, he's got all the potential in the world to be an absolute superstar. I thought it might be a bit too soon for the young man, but you have decided he is the man you want me to put my trust in. And of course, I will listen to your feedback. And so with us returning to Selhurst Park for the first game of this episode, he's going to get the opportunity once again to go straight back into the starting 11 alongside who is going to be a debutante here for Crystal Palace as Dominic Solanke is going to get the chance to show the Crystal Palace fans what he can do at home. He will also start up front in what is going to be an absolutely huge game at home against Wolves. And so it's Anderson to bring it out of defence and fires a lovely ball over to an unmarked Munoz on the right hand side. Brings it forward over to Fabio Vieira. Loops it over the top. Can Munoz get there ahead of the left back? No, he can't. Really good defending in the end. So it's Lamina for Wolves being hunted down by Adam Wharton. Can't get there quick enough. Kuna though can. And in the end, it's Raksak who tries to come across with a challenge. Doesn't manage to get there enough though. As Gomez brings it forward. Lovely ball into Doyle who strikes. Good save from the goalkeeper. But it's Ain't Nori with the throw into Lamina. And he's going to try and see if he can look to get a ball in. But Munoz does it just about enough to get the ball away from him. And now the right back will bring this one away. This is a real powerful run by him. And this is a lovely ball into Fabio Vieira and now the young man can try and see if he can streak past the defender here tries to play a ball forward it's a good ball forward into Munoz throws it into the box looking for Dominic Solanke in the end it was straight into the arms of the goalkeeper so it's Marque now Back into Fabio Vieira. Absolutely everything is going through that young man at the moment. It's Adam Wharton into Dominic Solanke. His first real opportunity to hold the ball up. Tries to play it into Raksaki. He was just held off the ball, though. It was all too easy for the Wolves defence. And the uh, the young man's got to get his head in the game. He's been fairly quiet so far as he looks to try and see if he can apply the pressure up front here. But he loses out. And it's Matt Doherty now to bring it forward into Kuna. Back out to Gomez. Wolves playing some really nice football right on the edge of my half here as Doyle brings it forward. Decore, though, with a big challenge. And Raksaki is the man now who can try and see if he can bring it forward. Skips away from a challenge and gets a foul for in the process. Well, that is the sort of trickery that the young man possesses, and that is the sort of thing that he can do. He can win fouls for us in dangerous areas, and he's picked the ball up once again in a dangerous area. Tried to feed it, feed it through, sorry, to Adam Wharton. Couldn't quite get there, though, but he will win the ball back and give away a foul in the process as well. End to end stuff here in the opening 45 minutes here as Kuna just goes past Pacho. Lucky, not even there. Really nicely done. In to Doyle. Doyle strikes Henderson with another big save. Well, I've got to be honest, although we've played some decent football, Wolves have had the better of the opportunities off the two teams so far in this game as they look to try and see if they can add one. But it's a good head, but it's an even better block this time by Anderson. So it's Gomez now at the beginning of this second half to try and drive through the heart of this Crystal Palace midfield and Gomez picks it up once again. Really nicely done here by Wolves. Playing some good football at the beginning of the second half. Doyle though can't go past Anderson. Really good defending and then Gay loses it in a dangerous position and Kuna tries to play it through into Doyle again. Henderson is forced into his third big save of the game. The young man is keeping us in this game so far. But it's Raksaki now who will pick it up down this left hand side. Looking for the run of Dominic Solanke but instead takes it on himself. Goes past one player. Can he go past two? Instead cuts it back into Adam Wharton. Adam Wharton stayed on side into Dominic Solanke. Shifts it onto his right and forces the keeper into a save. But it was the Englishman's first big chance of the game and it was our first big chance of the game and one that we couldn't take advantage of but Wharton will be the man to throw it in. Looking for Dominic Solanke again can't get his head on it and this time the goalkeeper comes out and claims it. Matt Doherty for Wolves into Doyle. It was almost blocked off by Decore but Eric Lamella manages to pick it up and throws a lovely little ball out to Bueno. Now uh, eight Nori on the left hand side blocked off by Munoz Adam Wharton has it in the centre of the park here and Adam Wharton skips away from a couple of challenges really nicely Decore now into Raksaki looking for the ball forward. Lovely ball into Merlin Merlin now tries to play it into Decore it was really well read by the defender. So it's Munoz now who wins it back into Decore. 
The core is going to try and see if he can float a ball over to Raksaki here. And the young man's managed to stay outside. Just can't get on the end of it. Dominic Solanke will try and press. Doesn't manage to win it. The press continues, though, with Fabio Vieira on the other side. And Solanke almost gets there. My word, we're doing everything we can to try and win the ball back. And we've done just that. It's now Raksaki. You can't play it forward into Doherty. Just a series of poor play from both teams there. Neither team can hold on to the ball. And Wolves bring it clear. But they've gone and given it away again. This time it's Raksaki who picks it up once again. And Raksaki is bursting forward here. Raksaki onto his right. Oh, my goodness. I thought that was about to nestle into the top right-hand corner. And he just dragged it wide. Well, Solanke hasn't had much luck up front in the opening 75 minutes. So Mateta will get the nod to come back on. And this is his opportunity to try and see if he can fight his way back into a starting spot. It's ain't Nori now into Adam Wharton. Adam Wharton does a really good job of trying to win that ball back well. And Fabio Vieira is trying to bundle his way through. Ends up losing it though. Quang now into Kuna. Anyone's game here. Nil-nil with about 10 minutes remaining on the clock. And both of these two teams have looked likely to score each time they go forward. Anderson wins it back in a really good position. He's going to try and see if he can play through Mateta, who just manages to hold on to the ball. But he's looking for options up ahead of him. Can he find any? It's a really good ball out wide, but in the end, it's just cut out. Really good defending. But Mateta wins it back. That is a man who is desperate to fight his way back into the starting 11. Really good stuff from the young man. Anderson now into Decore. Back into Franca, who's on as a substitute in place of Raksaki, who just ran out of a little bit of steam. Nathaniel Klein now into Fabio Vieira. Fabio Vieira to burst into the box, plays it across. I was looking for Franca, just a bit too high for the young man. And that just turned out to be the last attack of the game. In the end, it is a stalemate here at Selhurst Park. We couldn't find a way to break through a stubborn Wolves defence. And at full time here, it finishes Crystal Palace nil, Wolves nil. So Solanke did manage to make his debut, but unfortunately he didn't manage to make much of an impression. He had one decent chance from the edge of the box, but I think he's going to have to do a little bit better if he wants to get on the score sheet here for the first time in a Crystal Palace shirt. I do have to give a little shout out to this man, Raksaki, though. If a goal was going to come, it was more than likely going to come through the creativity of the young man. He had a couple of really decent runs. One that he just shaved the outside of the post with that I thought was about to nestle into the top right-hand corner. He got a bit unlucky, but I'm sure there are more, more goals to come from the young Englishman. For now, though, with the transfer window slammed shut and still having £73 million in the budget. And whilst I wouldn't necessarily say this is a world-class team, we've certainly got a decent mass of young players. Let's see how they got on until January, because we certainly got the funds to improve then. But now, though, it's time to see if we can make our way through the next few games. It's starting to look like not making any additional changes to this team is really starting to pay off, because unbelievably, nine games in, we sit with 20 points on the board, six wins to our name, and we are in third place in the Premier League table, far exceeding expectations. Dominic Solanke is starting to find his feet in a Palace shirt with four goals in seven appearances, but unlikely so. Our right back, Daniel Munoz, is the man who seems to be leading the goal-scoring chart so far this season. He's equal with Dominic Solanke. Why on earth is a right back our top goal scorer? But more impressively, it seems that Raksaki is starting to fill the void that the likes of Eze and Elise left behind. Yes, it's only two goals, but it's also two assists, and it seems like the young man is on the right path. And so, with a Tottenham team up challenging for the Champions League spots alongside us in second place, it is, of course, that team that we are going to be welcoming to Selhurst Park for our very next Premier League game. It's a titanic clash in front of our home fans, and once again, a real opportunity to put a marker down and really show what this team has to offer this season. It's a massive game. It's Crystal Palace against Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. So it's going to be Oliver Skip who's going to bring the ball forward into our half here and lays it off to Heung-Min Son. This is going to be a really dangerous game. We proved we had the chops against the other team from North London in Arsenal earlier on in the season, beating them 1-0. Can we do the same against their arch rivals here today? But it's Son who's got an early free kick here inside the opening five minutes here. It's been all Spurs. We haven't been able to string any passes together whatsoever, showing their, uh, their chops so far this game. Madison, though, back into Oliver Skip, back into Madison, right on the edge of the box, playing with fire here. And now it's Heung-Min Son. Lines up a strike. It's blocked off by Pacho. Gay gets it away. But is that going to be the story? of the game but it's Mark Gay who's absolutely bursting down this right hand side he's come from nowhere as the young man can he lay a ball forward into the right back Munoz who brings it forward cuts it back into Solanke and Dominic Solanke scores once again to get his fifth goal for Crystal Palace so far this season what an electric start it's been for the young man well it's an incisive lightning counter attack Mark Gay won the ball back inside his own half and then drove down the right hand side laid it in front for Dominic Munoz and then he just laid it on a plate for Solanke. Wonderful finish. Posta Coglu's furious. It's 1-0 Crystal Palace. It's Oliver Skip 2 bringing it away into your doggy now. Spurs are going to try and see if they can hit us back straight away. But Decore has won the ball back in a really good position. Has he got the pace and the beating of your doggy down that left-hand side? He's got options here in the middle. Can he try and see if he can find Raksaki? He almost did. It was played just behind the young man, though. It's Richarlison now 
into Oliver Skip, trying to see if he can burst forward here, surely looking for James Madison right in front of him, but Decore to our rescue once again, brilliant challenge, and a brilliant ball into Fabio Vieira now, we're looking to try and see if we can hit Spurs on the counter-attack once again, Munoz to drive into the box, is he going to once again look for the cutback here, looking for Solanke, he finds him once again, it's a carbon copy of the first goal, and Spurs are just being opened up at will, down that right-hand side, Dominic Solanke points to the sky. The crowd go wild. It's 2-0. Well, Munoz once again is a threat down that right-hand side. He just drives to the byline and he has the awareness to pick up Dominic Solanke right on the edge of the six-yard box who has just found lovely little pockets of space in between the two centre-backs. He lays it on a plate and he's not going to miss from there. It's his second of the game. It's our second. It's 2-0. So it's Basuma for Spurs. Surely they're going to try and see if they can hit back immediately here. They seem to have lost their way as Kulusevski, the big Swede, takes it forward. Now into Pedro Porro. It's Basuma into the box. Box here blocked off big save from Henderson we keep it in play defensively we've been absolutely outstanding today as well there's Oliver Skip now into Basuma Basuma into Mickey van der Ven Spurs looking to try and see if they can assert themselves and find a route back into this game as at the moment we are defending resolutely into Corey he's just had the better of Skip all game but Basuma's come across Adam Wharton puts in a block but it falls to Richarlison lovely little back flick into Oliver Skip now to bring it forward he finds Jung Min Son who tries to loop it over Dean Henderson who's equal to it so it's Anderson now at the beginning of this second half into Fabio Vieira has been an unlikely peripheral figure so far in this game, but it hasn't mattered because we are still 2-0 up here. Decore is going to look for the ball through into Tyrick Mitchell, who's managed to keep himself onside. Across to Raksaki with his left, forces Vicario into a big save. Well, down both flanks, we are combining beautifully. We were so close to a third there to put the game to bed. Wharton throws it in, looking for Solanke, who's looking for his hat-trick. It gets headed away. Raksaki will pick up the scraps, though. Pacho now, out to Adam Wharton on the left-hand side, turns around the defender really nicely, throws the ball in, looking for someone at the back post. In the end, it's Raksaki, who just about manages to get onto it, keeps the ball in play. Mitchell now into Mark Gay, who finds himself in the box, can't get the beating of his fellow central defender in Romero, and eventually Spurs clear their lines. Young Min Son for Spurs, though, into Richarlison. It's Basuma who now has it, as they now try and bring it forward into Richarlison once again. Richarlison manages to skip past a couple of challenges. Madison now out to an unmarked Kulusevski on the right-hand side. Mitchell comes across, though. That is a brilliant thumping challenge, and exactly what you want to see from the young man. Decore, though, into Raksaki, now into Dominic Solanke. We've got options up ahead, and he finds Raksaki again, and the young Englishman is going to try and see if he can burst past Romero here down this side, but he's got no options up ahead of him, so checks back in, looks for Solanke, full of confidence on his right, takes the shot on, forces Vicario into another save. It is end-to-end -end stuff here at Selhurst Park, absolutely exhilarating, edge of the seat stuff here, thrown into the box, Pacho tries to get on it, yeah he does, Vicario tips it over. Well the goalkeeper is keeping Tottenham in this game, we are absolutely battering them, it is Wharton who throws it in, lovely little corner in, looking for Solanke, he once again is headed clear. Raksaki with the loose ball once more. It's Munoz now on the right-hand side. Surely he's going to throw it in. He does throw it in. Look at Solanke at the back post. Can't find him. Raksaki to try and see if he can get on the loose ball. It's headed clear though, but Spurs are living life on the edge. Young Min Son now into Kulusevski. He is challenged by Tyrick Mitchell. We really have the bit between our teeth there. Solanke now looking for someone up ahead of him. Finds Munoz. Ball into Fabio Vieira to make it three. He's hit the post. That was the chance to put the game to bed. It's Kulusevski now. Into Richarlison. Richarlison out to Pedro Porro. It is now or never for Spurs. They've got to find a route back into this game. And Richarlison is looking to be that man who will find that route back for them. Throws it in. Look at Madison with a nice little looped head. But Henderson once again is equal to it. Fabio Vieira to bring it forward once more. Looks for the ball down the centre into Dominic Solanke. Who holds it up well. He looks out wide to the right-hand side. Finds Munoz. Really nicely done. Munoz has options in the box. Throws it in. Looking for Fabio Vieira in the end. He just couldn't get his head on it. Raksaki couldn't get there either. And Spurs once again get rid of it. Pedro Porro is beaten to it by Tyrick Mitchell who wins it back and plays it into Dominic Solanke. Solanke now into Raksaki. Can the young man get there? No, he can't. Oliver Skip gets there in front of him. Well, it does not matter because it is game over here at Selhurst Park. And once again, Crystal Palace have come and got a historic result at home. A thumping victory of Spurs. We absolutely battered them. That man, Dominic Solanke, at the double. As his two goals have given us a deserved 2-0 victory at full time. He is proving to be an inspired signing since joining on a real bargain fee. And I cannot believe I'm saying this, but his two goals have literally lifted us above Spurs into second place in the Premier League table, just two points off top spot. However, with all of my attacking players getting the plaudits so far this season, with only five goals conceded in the league so far, I do have to give a shout out to these three men. Mark Gay has ever proving what an important role he plays at this club and why the England manager Gareth Southgate was so keen to start him in his first European Championship game. Captain Joachim Anderson has been an ever present for Crystal Palace over the last few seasons and with performances like this, it's not hard to see why. But a special big shout out to my new signing, 
William Pacho, just 22 years of age. He has walked into Premier League life with a plum. He's slotted in like a glove and at £30 million, his purchase looks an absolute steal. But as the games keep coming, the positive results follow. 3-2 away from home against Burnley. A one-all draw against Everton. Another 3-2 victory, this time away from home against West Ham. And a one-all draw against Bournemouth. Keeps our unbeaten run this episode alive and keeps us in the Champions League on third place in the Premier League table after 15 games with 32 points on the board. But now we are about to see what this team are really made of because for the third and final time this episode we are heading back to Selhurst Park for an absolutely mouth-watering clash against the English Giants Liverpool. A Liverpool team that are actually struggling in this career mode only in eighth in the Premier League but I'm sure one that still possess the absolute quality to hurt us all over the pitch. Once again it's an opportunity for Crystal Palace to put a marker down and claim a much needed three points. However with this hitting the Christmas period you can see I've had to make a couple of enforced changes to my squad due to a little bit of fatigue. The likes of Merlin coming in at the back Will Hughes coming into midfield but as you can see I've got a couple of players like Vieira, like Adam Morton and also like Mark Gay who are really struggling for fitness and not too much on the bench in terms of fatigue as well. Let's see how this game pans out. So it's Adam Morton now into Will Hughes who's got a wonderful opportunity here to try and stake a claim in the starting 11 an unlikely starter here today against Liverpool but it is as I said a really good opportunity for him and it looks like he's making the most of it at the moment tries to burst into the box trying to muscle his way through and in the end he's just crowded out Cody Gakpo for Liverpool though Will Hughes frantically trying to come across here he's everywhere at the moment inside the opening five to ten minutes here as Merlin picks it up in the centre of the park Gives it to Tyrant Mitchell, who will now try and see if he can burst down this left-hand side. Plays it into Raksaki, full of beans, full of confidence here now. Bursts into the left-hand side, throws it into the box. Looking for Solanke, can't quite reach him. Will Hughes will get onto the loose ball, though, but in the end, heads it out to the right winger. And Liverpool can bring this one clear now on the counter-attack. He's frantically coming across, trying to see if he can challenge. Alexander-Arnold now into Berean, I think that is. Gakpo now back out to Trent Alexander-Arnold on the right-hand side. Tyrant Mitchell's trying to come across, hasn't got the speed to catch up with him. It's into Curtis Jones, big save from Henderson and he bounces on the second ball brilliant goalkeeping there's Adam Wharton now into Raksaki who's come in the centre to try and get himself involved and that's a really good piece of play to wriggle away from a couple of challenges Dominic Solanke though into Hughes who took a, just a bit of a heavy touch in the end fed it into Virgil van Dijk who had the composure to win it back that is a wonderful midfield splitting pass there from the big Dutchman at the back for Liverpool. Trent Alexander-Arnold now under a bit of pressure. Merlin wins the ball back really well from him. And now Raksaki can bring it forward. Looking for the overlap. Finds the overlap. And Merlin now will try and burst down this left-hand side. He's going to look for a ball in. Instead tries to just dink it back to Raksaki. And he got the cross all wrong there. And Liverpool now can be the ones to bring it clear. End-to-end -end stuff here at Selhurst Park inside the opening 35 minutes. Gravenberch now down the right-hand side. Looking for Gakpo who's got the pace to get away from Merlin now. Who's really struggling to get back on side and back into Gakpo now it's into Gravenberch on the right hand side has this attack just broken down and lost a little bit of momentum yes it has Will Hughes wins it back Dominic Solanke he surely he's going to look for the run of Raksaki he manages to find the run of Raksaki who takes it on his chest and he takes it down really nicely and he gets past a couple of the Liverpool players this is a fabulous run from the young Englishman into the box he goes can he cut it back I got the pass all wrong I should have taken the shot on well, that was my mistake I was looking for the pass into the edge of the six yard box and no one made the run I should have taken the shot on it was unfortunate for the young Englishman it was my mistake but it will fall back to him now into Anderson the centre back who's going to take on the shot himself and he forces Allison into a smart save Adam Moore now oh, loses it in a dangerous position to Gravenberch that is not where you want to lose it little bit of naivety there from the 19 year old and now Tendo on the edge of the box lovely little twist away into Gakpo Gakpo under a bit of pressure straight into the arms of Henderson we get away with one there Anderson now the centre back to bring this one forward finds Raksaki in the centre of the park has he got an option on the left hand side yes he does it's Tyrick Mitchell to burst forward here surely I'm going to look for the run of Dominic Solanke looks for the cutback finds the cutback Dominic Solanke on his right straight to Allison Gravenberch into Curtis Jones now darting through the centre Wharton's trying to come across but not quick enough Luis Diaz now, Luis Diaz cuts it back into Gakpo, Gakpo strikes, it's Anderson who gets there, Munoz heads it clear Fatigue is ripping through the camp here and I'm having to make four substitutions here as we are struggling with 15 minutes remaining, can this extra injection of freshness just see us over the line to keep another clean sheet at home it's Luis Diaz into Gakpo Gakpo weaves away and just as I say that, Gakpo goes and applies a wonderful finish, well perhaps the subs had the adverse effects. We lost a little bit of concentration and Cody Gagbo said thank you very much. A wonderful finish into the top right hand corner. The keeper had no chance. 1-0 Liverpool. Merlin now into Raksaki on the right hand side. Loses out to Trent Alexander-Arnold and now Liverpool have got the bit between their teeth here but Merlin with a really good challenge. Decore wins it back and Decore now on as a substitute.
loves the shoot to try and burst forward. He is offering that little bit more freshness now in the middle of the park. Decore is going to take it on with his right. And Allison just tips it over. Oh my word, what an incredible driving run by the young man through the heart of the midfield. Gets us a corner that Raksaki's going to take. Floats it in. Looking for the right back, Munoz, who heads it over. And in the end, it's easy for Allison. So it's Merlin now into Raksaki, who's come deep to try and see if he can get himself involved in this game. But he's lost that once again to Simakas. Now it's Gravenberch into Eze, the former Crystal Palace man, of course, buying his trade at Liverpool. Oh, how I'm sure he will be delighted to get the three points here today. Gravenberch, we are deep into stoppage time. Gagbo turns into Eze. We cannot let Eze score. Eze weaving around, trying to look for an option here. Finds Gagbo. And Gagbo, I think, had just straight offside as the referee blows for full time. Well, it was a hard-fought game. We gave it absolutely everything. But in the end, that little bit of fatigue proved just too much. As a full-time here, it finishes Crystal Palace nil, Liverpool 1. Well, it's a hard loss to take because we've been on an unbeaten run. And I really felt like we did enough to at least deserve a draw. But with us sitting in third place in the Premier League, I certainly cannot have any complaints about how the season's going so far. These players have been in absolutely fantastic form. But with us still having £72 million left in the budget, and with us only being a matter of weeks away from the start of the January transfer window. Once again, let me know down below which area of the team do you think needs improving and which players would you like to see in a Crystal Palace shirt that can take us to the next level and maybe continue our fight for a Champions League spot this season. Thanks everyone once again for watching. This will be the end of the episode. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again next time.